Hello and welcome to one of my more advanced iMacros scripting demonstrations. This morning I'd like to show you something that I do uh, twice a day, which is change the, t the uh, after hours telephone numbers for the person that is on call each evening at my work. Since this is a daily chore that can be automated, I thought I'd show you how, I, how it's done. And this com includes some of the more advanced scripting features that you can use in inside iMacros to pull information from a, from a data file. Uh, the data is stored in a CSV, CSV file, which stands for comma separated values, which can be opened up either in Microsoft Excel. Uh, you can use one of the, the open office spreadsheet program to open it up, or you can just open it up in Notepad. The uh, information is stored in clear text, and there's a comma, comma between each uh, bit of data. So let me start out by opening up the iMacros control panel. And in Internet Explorer, on my Internet Explorer, it is over here on the right-hand side of the toolbar. In Firefox, it's in a different location. And in Google Chrome, it is in a different location. So sometimes you'll have to hunt around to find your control panel button on your your toolbars and since I use this program every day I do keep it at the top of my list and in this case I've named it with uh, three capital letter A's and an underscore sign that's the naming convention I started using the more important stuff that I use has more A's in it so that it gets alphabetized closer to the top of the list so let me run this this on call uh, phone number change iMacro. When I run this, it's going to log me into the Shortel phone system. It's going to navigate to the page where I can modify the on call phone number, and then it's going to wait for me to save the page. I, I intentionally stopped it before it, the before clicking the save button so that I could verify that I had the right phone number in the in the uh, phone number box down here and that everything was proper before I let the page uh, save itself for the evening. And many times you'll want to do that. You'll want to verify the data gets put into the boxes correctly because there are some websites that you'll use over and over again that they will make su uh, subtle changes to the sites and they'll change the name of a form or the name of a box and suddenly your iMacros will stop working and if you're not paying attention the iMacros will run it'll error out and you won't notice it but you did not complete whatever task you were attempting to do so that's why I always wait stop mine and make it wait for, for some type of manual input when I need to be sure that things have completed properly so let me run the play button and this will go pretty quick so this is just a warning from the from the Shortel web page asking me, to, am I sure I want to navigate away from this particular page? And as you can see, there are several pages I have to navigate, navigate through to get to where I want to be in order to change the uh, phone number for the on-call person for the night. And as you can see, I have set up my iMacro so that it waits for a prompt. And this is all thing this is this text is text I actually set up and these numbers refer to individual CSV files that I've set up with each one each person's phone number in there so that once I pick a number and hit OK it's going to put that number in this field down here and then it will stop and wait for me to save the the, uh, the call for the on call phone number for the night by clicking this save button up here so in this case, I'm going to set it to our daytime phone number by hitting the number 7, clicking OK, and there it is at the bottom. So our on-call after-hours IT system is turned off after 8 a.m. in the morning, so it doesn't really matter what I put in here after 8 o'clock in the morning because the, the system is going to be turned off. 
and then later in, at the end of the business day, it turns itself back on, and that's when it's critical that I have the right number in here. So as you can see, the number is in here, but my save button is not lit up yet. So that's just a uh, a quirk of this web page. For some reason, I have to hit a key after this has been put in here for the save button to come to be active. So in this case, I usually just hit the space bar and the page recognizes that I have done an action on in this box and made a change and now I click save. And that is the entire macro. The next things I'd like to show you is the actual code of the iMacro, where the data is stored and what that data looks like when you open the file up so that you can put in your own data and create the same thing. So to start out with, I'd like to show you the, the script of the iMacro. Highlight your iMacro that you would like to edit. Right click on it and click left click on edit macro. And it will pull it up. You want me to put this up here where it's more centered and easier to see. I know that I like to see things more in the center of the screen and it's kind of irritating when I'm watching a training video and the the uh, demonstration portion of it is off to one side or the other. As you can see, it starts off with the uh, basic stuff that comes with all uh, iMacros, the version number, what tab you're in, and this close all others. But in this case, I had told it when I built it not to close all the others so it's not going to close any of the other existing tabs. So it's going to leave all these other tabs that I use every day up here. So these are these three lines are in every one of the iMacros before we even start recording. This is the URL for the page I want to log into. this next tag that it locates the text box where I want to put in my username and this attribute ID is the descriptor from the web page that identifies the box where you want to type in your username and the same thing goes for your password and where it says attribute name password there is the word password somewhere in, in the name field for the password box. So if you were to look at the uh, code for the the web page, you would see the password box has the word password as its name somewhere in the descriptor. And this is the part that clicks the submit button. And the submit button value must be called login because that's what it pulled from the web page. This part is where it goes into the left hand control pane over here and clicks on the different links to get to, to navigate to the page where I can change the uh, on call phone number. And as you can see this tries to find this button or link and it tries to find another link and it looks for a frame name text and then it finds another link so it, it navigates through several pages to get to the final page where I need to be to change the phone number and when it finally does navigate to that last page where the phone number can be changed it looks up the the input box on the web page that has the attribute ID phone number now once it finds that, it places the cursor in the phone number box and then launches a prompt. This is a command that I had to uh, look up on the iMacros website and, and figure out how to use. So the command to launch that little rectangular box that says who's on call and ask me for to put in a number for the correct person who's going to be on call. This section right here is going to be loaded into the uh, variable called var1. So depending on 
which number I put in here, it will be loaded into var1. And then it's going to use this command called set data source to figure out which one of the CSV files I need to pull the data from. So I have a CSV file named named them one, I have one named two, named three, all the way up to seven. So depending on which num number I type into the the box for variable one, it's going to launch that particular CSV file. So we see variable one right here, and you see variable one right here. So it's going to take, for example, if I click uh, typed in the number six in the in the uh, prompt box, it's going to load the number six into variable one. And then in the next line, it's going to say, OK, where do I go to pull the data from? This is the path where I have stored each one of the CSV files. And it's going to say, OK, variable, in this case, variable 6 dot CSV. And it's going to be able to pull the data out of that file and load it into the phone number box. And this third line here, oops, third line here is the number of columns, just like the columns in a in an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, in a CSV file, when you open it up with Notepad, instead of having columns, it is separated by commas. So if you have three columns in Excel, you will have three pieces of data separated by commas. It uses those commas to separate data when you open it up in Notepad. Uh, in this case, I only have one column, but the default was three, so I just left it at three, at three when I built this. And this final line is where it actually inputs the data into the on-call phone number box on the form down here at the this little section here. And I had some data that is common to every phone number. This is the part where it tells it what the actual values to put into the box. So I have I always put 9 plus 1 into the box before the phone number. So I didn't need to save the uh, this part as a data in my column 1 of my CSV file. So in order to always type in the 9 plus 1 and a space before the phone number, I had to actually put this into the content field, 9 plus 1. If you want to put a space into the field, you actually have to put the letters SP with the little uh, greater than less than brackets before or between any numbers or letters so that it shows up just like that down here. Let me pull that back up and this final portion tells it which column to pull the data from. For example, uh, even though I don't have three, three columns in my CSV file with data in them, I had to tell it which one to pull the data from because I specified that I had three. If I had the data I wanted to pull from the third column, I would have to put it in here and list it as column three where I wanted to pull the data from. And one of the, the quirky things about iMacros is you cannot specify which row. So it's always going to pull the data from the first row in your file unless you're doing a loop. Since I'm not doing a loop, I can only load up data from the first uh, from the first row and whatever column I specify when running this just one time. There are ways of setting up a loop so that you can have a, a CSV file with multiple rows and it will pull data or write data to those rows. But this is a more basic iMacro and the, the easiest solution for me was to create uh, seven different CSV files because I had seven different phone numbers and then set up a variable to tell it which of the uh, CSV files I wanted to pull to grab the data. And the next thing I'd like to show you is the file location and the actual data in the files. And looking at the iMacros, this is the path to the file folder where I store the CSV files and this can be almost anything or any almost any location just as long as everything is stored within this one folder then there, everything should run properly and this is the actual folder where I have things stored 
and I have a couple extra files in there. This address file and this XLS CSV file are unnecessary. They were just things I was playing with when I first created this. And as you can see, each one is numbered 1 through 7 to correspond with the 1 through 7 on here. So when the iMacros runs, it's going to pull the data from these individual files. And each one of these files has just one phone number in it. That was one of the quirks about creating the iMacros was the, the easiest solution that I could find to creating this macros was to build seven individual files. Each file has one phone number in it so that the iMacros can use the variable command to pull one phone number for each person. And if I were to open it up in Excel, this is what it looks like. It's in row one, column one, and that corresponds to column one right there. So I didn't have to tell it row one, but I did have to specify which column of the three that I said the data source had to pull the data. So if I had put this number in column B, I would have had to go in here and put column two right there. Otherwise, it would have pulled up a blank field. And this is what the CSV file looks like in Excel. We minimize that, and I'll show you what it looks like in Notepad. And this is what it looks like in Notepad when it's pulled up. It is just a plain text file. If I had more than one column in my CSV file, it would show up like that with a column between each one of the phone numbers. So if I had three columns, that's how the data would be laid out in the, the notepad file as a CSV, comma separated values. So let me get rid of that because I don't need it. Let me shut that file down. And that is it in this tutorial. We have gone over some of the more advanced features of iMacros and how to pull data from a file and input it into a field on a web page. I have demonstrated the prompt command, which actually creates a pop-up text box and waits for an input, which is stored in a variable. We have seen that all the files for the variables must be stored in one central location and the command that will allow you to pull one particular file out and use the data in it. We have seen how the data source can be set from multiple columns. And I have demonstrated how you can use content over and over again. And we have seen how the data is loaded into the text box on the web page and how you can add data that is used over and over again to the text box along with the information pulled from a comma separated value Form. Thank you for watching and I hope you were able to use iMacros to make your life a little bit easier.